all of the upgrades that I have done to Briarios have been purely to fix a problem that I was having or to meet a need. Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make motorcycle travel vlogs, how-tos, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. This is my 2016 Honda CB500XA, so it has the ABS. <laughs> His name is Briarios Hecaton Carries. It was kind of a joke when I got him. He was my first uh, fuel-injected bike, so we joked that he was my cyborg boyfriend. If you don't know, Briarios is a cyborg character on an anime called Appleseed. Don't expect you to know that information, but the Hecaton carries were also Greek titans with a hundred arms, so it kind of fell into the Greek theme that I have for the names for the rest of my motorcycles, so it just worked out perfect. Getting to the point, a few people have asked me to list out all the modifications that I have made to my Honda. I'm going to tell you right now, it isn't a whole lot. <laughs> I don't have any fancy upgraded suspension, I don't have a different exhaust, I don't have any of the rally raid parts, so if you're here for that, I'm sorry I can't give that to you, but there's lots of other resources on the internet for that. All of the upgrades that I have done to Briarios have been purely to fix a problem that I was having or to meet a need. So that's what all of these upgrades are essentially doing, is meeting a need or something that I wanted to do and those accessories or parts made that easier or more comfortable. For context, since this is the 2016 model, I still have the old 17 inch front wheel and back. I believe all of the 2019 and newer models of the CB500X have a 19 inch front wheel. Rally Raid does make upgrade suspension and a 19 inch front wheel for the CB500X. However, when I was seriously looking at that, the parts and shipping from the UK would have cost me the same amount as just buying a used dirt bike. So I didn't do that. Would it be amazing? Yes. Do I have the money to do it? No. Do I absolutely need it? No. <laughs> Briarios does pretty much everything that I ask him to do right now, and that's all that I need. Maybe in the future, when I seriously see a need for it, or when I destroy the cast wheels, then I'll think about it. <laughs> all right, getting right to the actual list of the accessories and modifications that I have done to this bike. I don't remember in what order I got all the accessories that I have on my bike, so we'll just start up here and then move down and back. <laughs> Starting with my accessory bar up here, which my phone mount and my action camera mount sit on. Actually, I also just upgraded to the RAM mount. It finally just, it finally happened, you guys. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about the accessory bar. I kind of regret going the cheap route because it doesn't fit quite right. I had to modify the bolts for my windshield so my windshield wouldn't pop off going down the highway. But an accessory bar is super useful, so I do recommend them, just not the one that I got, so I'm not even going to list it in the description. I don't have to dip my head to look at my phone as GPS, and it doesn't interfere with my tank bag when I'm moving the handlebars like it did when it was mounted down here. So do recommend, not the one that I got, it's also just nice to have a higher point to mount the GoPro than down on the handlebars. Um, I don't know if heated grips count as a mod, but I'm gonna list it here. I have the Bike Master heated grips and I love, love them. I have pretty crappy circulation in my hand, so I actually end up using them most of the year. Uh, anytime the temperature drops, like <laughs> I'm riding next to a river and it's a little bit colder than I thought it was going to be, or all the night riding that I end up doing I don't mean to do, but I end up doing it. And uh, even just having it down on like the first or second level means that I can keep the blood flowing in my fingers. I like the Bike Master ones a little bit more than others that I have tried, like the Oxford ones, because you have a wider range of adjustability, essentially. They just work. I never had any issues with them. I've bought multiple pairs at this point. <laughs> Not because they failed, but just to put them on other bikes. <laughs> Under my hippo hands here, I have the Bark Busters VPS handguards. I used to have the OEM Honda handguards that you can get when you buy the bike, and those worked fine for wind blockers. They're not super protective because there's no support bar in there, it's just the piece of plastic just kind of out there. And uh, it had seen 
its fair share of sticks and twigs and uh, right before I went on Fly the Magpie, I just it was time to upgrade. And a wonderful subscriber helped me do that, so thank you. The other selfish reason I really wanted to upgrade the hand guards is because they just they support my hippo hands so much better than the stock hand guards did. Speaking of the hippo hands, I have the Rogue model. And if you have never tried hand covers before, it is a game changer for shoulder season riding. These in combination with the heated grips, just it's like a tiny hand oven. It's amazing. Also, if you live in an area that sees a lot of precipitation, you will know the struggle of trying to put a wet hand back inside of a wet glove. And so these keep a lot of the rain off of my gloves. So if I stop and pull my hands out to do something and put them back in the gloves, there's less likelihood that I have to put wet hands back inside of a wet glove, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. They're awesome. They're easy to take on and off. I have tried other brands of hand covers when Nathan and Chris introduced me to them and let me borrow theirs for a trip. I got hooked. I came back. I tried to go the cheap route, bought a cheapy pair. I couldn't like touch my controls. Like the way that the hand guards were made, they came all the way out and they kind of hugged your arm. So it was dangerous because I couldn't always get my arm out quickly and easily. And also because I couldn't work my controls. So these are much higher quality. They give me full access to my controls. They're easy to pull on and off. Just hippo hands over anything. <laughs> I also have a USB and a 12 volt charger. I've gone through a few different versions of these USB chargers. This one went on Fly the Magpie with me through the downpour in West Virginia and Virginia, and it's still alive, so I'm very proud of it. Moving down to my engine guards. Right now I only have the uppers. I'm considering the lowers. That's a future problem. <laughs> I got the uppers. You will notice a theme with the rest of the modifications that it's mostly so that I can have more storage on the bike for longer and longer trips. Not gonna lie. 80% of the reason that I bought these engine guards was to put rollies on them and 20% was to protect the bike. As you can probably see, I've done my fair share of uh, dropping the bike before I got them. <laughs> and under here I have the SW Motec skid plate for the Honda CB500X. If you watch the preparation for Flight of the Magpie, you will know when I did the oil change before the trip, I found a pretty substantial dent in the plastic and aluminum stock skid plate that comes with the bike um, and that kind of pretty much made up my mind that it, there was a need for an actual skid plate after what like four years of essentially beating the crap out of this bike <laughs> i'm sorry baby but there is one now so oh, shout out to all the ogs who remember when pretty much all my videos were sitting on the floor next to a bike these are my sw motec quick lock evo side case racks. I went through a couple different iterations before I got to this point. I tried to go rackless for a while. That didn't work out. Uh, I had to keep adjusting the saddlebags and make sure that they weren't working themselves into my rear tire. It was just a nightmare. So then I tried to go the cheap route and I got these shad luggage supports and they were trash. They were part of the reason that the whole exploding saddlebag situation happened. Anyway, I hate them. <laughs> and when I got back to Montana and I pulled the saddlebags off and I actually saw how warped the shad racks were, it really emphasized to me that I needed to invest in something that was gonna be sturdy and reliable. And that's what led to the SW Motec racks. And let me tell you, it's like really nice to be able to strap your luggage to something and know that it's not gonna move around and that it's gonna be secure and then you don't have to check it at literally every single stop to make sure that it hasn't moved around. It's just, it's so nice. <laughs> that leads me straight to the SW Motec Street Rack Luggage Rack, which I got specifically because it's the only one that works in conjunction with these side case racks because they mount to a similar or the same point on the subframe of the bike. The main reason I had it was so that I could mount my duffel bag further back on the motorcycle. It would leave room if I needed to carry a passenger in some kind of emergency situation and also to strap groceries to my back seat or extra stuff because I tend to collect extra stuff when I'm on the road. It just happens. <laughs> It also is so if the duffel bag is further back on the motorcycle, it's just easier for me to access the saddlebags. 
Next are my tool tubes, which everybody asks about. They're actually tractor manual tubes I use to carry my little extra gas can. And the other one has uh, chain lube and the gross toothbrush I use to clean my chain. <laughs> and you can get them through a lot of online tractor supply companies. They're a lot cheaper if you buy them as tractor manual tubes than if you buy motorcycle tool tubes online. Or you can go the route that my brother did and just make your own out of PVC pipe from the hardware store. I do have a bottle holster that I used to carry the gas can in, but this just works out better so that I can use the bottle holster for my water bottle. Eventually I'll have another one of the bottle holsters to put on the other side of the bike, but blah 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 tractor manual tubes cool cool <laughs> leading to my last pride and joy my custom heat shield that my dad and i made out of a coffee can <laughs> after the whole explosion incident there was a whole lot of modifications that happened after the explosion incident you know it was a literal catalyst <laughs> Anyway, it does its job. It makes sure that my saddlebag can no longer ever just sit straight on the exhaust. It does its job very, very well. The way that we folded it under and over itself, I can put my hand flat on this even when the exhaust is hot. So it's awesome. There are a lot of like actual heat shields that you can buy. This was a creation out of necessity because I needed it for the ride back to Portland and I just haven't seen a reason to upgrade it. We did sand down this back edge and cover it in tape so it wouldn't cut into my saddlebag. Um, yeah, super useful. I haven't even upgraded the windshield. A lot of other long distance riders who ride the CB 500 x get a bigger windshield. Haven't done that, just haven't seen a need for it. I told you it wasn't much. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button if you did. For those of you who have just gotten a brand new CB500X, uh, let me know what mods that you have made. Maybe tell me the reason if you did get a bigger windshield, you know? I just don't sit that tall on the motorcycle, you guys. I don't, it's fine. I haven't really seen a huge need for it. If you would like to support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these ad free before the rest of the world over on my Patreon. Links to that are down in the description. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I also have t-shirts, stickers, prints, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them over in my Rubble and my Etsy shop. And if you can't support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week. And question for my end screen crew. If you can remember, what was the first modification that you made to your motorcycle? I'll see you guys later. <laughs>